Welcome again. I've been living here in Shanghai for the past six years, teaching IB biology and IB environmental systems and societies. And perhaps you might have seen some of my videos for ESS and for biology. But today, I want to invite all students, whether you be a student of IB biology, AP biology, A-levels, or any advanced biology curriculum that requires this kind of field study. Perhaps you might be an undergraduate student at a university or even a postgraduate student somewhere in the world. Today, I want to invite all of you to join us in this global research project. Because while scientists always collaborated, this skill of collaboration has now become commonplace in 21st century learning. And of course, IB students and all good students seek to be excellent communicators, inquirers, and of course, to be knowledgeable about your subject. So I want to welcome all of you to participate in this global Lichen project. It's really built out of the IB biology curriculum for first exams in 2016, as we studied topic four, ecology, for we are trying to develop this skill, testing for association between two species using the chi-squared test with data obtained by quadrat sampling. The idea that you have to test for an association between two species is one way to look at it, but of course we can also look for an association between a species and some non-living component of the environment, as I discussed in this lesson. And you can click here if you need to go back and have a look at that lesson, where we investigated a factor that affected the distribution of moss within its habitat. So the idea that you need to look at the association between two species is one application, but we can also modify this question to look at association between a species and some non-living component of the environment. So today, we are taking on this research question that involves lichens. And the thing is, as we take it on, we seek to collect data from the world over. Because lichens are very, very unique structures. They don't belong to the plant kingdom, they don't belong to the animal kingdom, and actually they don't belong to any kingdom, for they are a unique kind of symbiotic association, a mutualism, if you will, where the alga associates with the fungus and both parties together get mutual benefit from this association. So it's an excellent example of relationships in ecology. But what is perhaps more significant is that lichens are bioindicators. And if you need to know more about bioindicators, just click right here and go back to my lesson on lichens as bioindicators of pollution. But today, I invite all of you to join us in this global quest for lichens. Now, the IB student is directed to use the quadrat sampling method to go about their study. And like good scientists, we need to be very clear about the protocol that we are going to follow in trying to have some kind of sampling method. The quadrat entails the concept of using some kind of grid to randomly generate a sampling point where you will go and put down your square frame or quadrat and take your data from a specified area. But the idea of the quadrat could be modified in light of modern day GPS technology. So let's consider this protocol that we will all follow as we go about searching for lichens in our neighborhoods. And remember, if you're not sure what lichens look like, click the link and go back to my video about lichens. So when you have your data, what are you going to do with it? We are going to set up a special Facebook group and you can click on the link below this video on YouTube to access the Facebook group where you can then upload your pictures and your data to the page. When we've collected enough data from around the world, we will ask the question, are lichens 
found only in areas of good air quality. For I've been searching for lichens here in China for the last six years and I've found none here in Shanghai. I've found no lichens in neighboring Wuxi and I've even interviewed people who have traveled all over China asking them if they've found any lichens and the answer they gave me was no. But I have traveled to Trinidad searching for lichens and I have traveled to the Blue Ridge Mountains in Virginia searching for lichens. And today I'm asking the question and based on my observations and my reading of the literature I've found that lichens are indeed very sensitive to air quality. But how sensitive are they? Do we have enough data? And even if we do, this is an opportunity for a global collaboration project involving not only IB biology students, but all students of biology. And we will share this data on Facebook and ultimately return to IB's question about the chi-squared test. And then we would set up a 2 times 2 contingency table into which we will place data in the appropriate box and then the output from the chi-squared test will help us to answer this question. Is there a relationship between air quality and the presence of lichens? I invite you all to join us on this global search for lichens.